Over the past year, axe duels has become one of the most popular forms of PvP in Minecraft. However, a lot of people still don't really know the most important parts of it. So today, me and my friend Swayshi, howdy there, partner, are here to give you some tips to help you instantly improve your axe PvP game. Make sure to like and subscribe and watch the other tutorial, it has a lot of good information. And join my Discord if you have any PvP related questions. Let's get right into it. A backstab is a great way to surprise your opponent. You get up close and get behind your opponent, bypassing their shield and giving you a free hit. Although not all backstabs are the same, the kind we'll show is the most basic and well-rounded kind, and is the base for other, more complex moves. At the start of a proper backstab, you gotta get close to an opponent while keeping your shield up. At times, you may let go of the shield button for a second to gain quick ground before lifting the shield back up again. This is called shield dancing, you can see it here. Once you get close enough to your opponent, you can let go of your shield and run for about a quarter of a second very quickly, then jump over them and turn around at the right time to hit them in the back. You should try to aim for jumping directly through the middle of your opponent so you minimize the player correction that will push you to the right or the left. You want to go straight through them. You can't make it too predictable that you're about to backstep though. Keep it subtle, no big hints that you're about to jump over them. You have to be fairly close when you jump for a backstab on your opponent, otherwise they would have more than enough time to react and hit you before you can jump over them. Also, make sure to turn around at the right time to hit them. Turning around too late or at the wrong angle will cause you to miss, which we don't like very much. There are some places and times that a backstab can be very effective. Most of the time, the chance to backstab comes up when both of you and your opponent are shield dancing near each other and you have the chance to get close. Trying a well-placed backstab will often confuse your opponents and give you an upper edge in the fight. However, if you have a well-skilled opponent or someone who fights you very often, backstabbing not, might not be as smart, as your attempts will be increasingly more predictable and avoidable. After a successful backstab, you might have the chance to hit your opponent again and start a nasty combo. If not, you can back off and try again later. If it worked the first time, it might work the second and third. But don't try it too often or it might hurt you. And that's backstabs. Let's move on. Now, moving on to backstab evading, you need to remember that your enemy might also know how to backstab. So you need to be ready to counter if they do. There are ways you can make it harder for your enemy to backstab you. One way is to make sure that whenever you're shield dancing, you stay moving. Since you have to be precise to do a backstab, it'll be harder for them. You can also just prevent backstabbing altogether. If you're the one to make the first move, whether it's backstabbing them or backing off to crossbow or anything, they won't get the chance to backstab you in the first place. If you manage to make your enemy mess up a backstab or they just messed up because they suck, you now have the upper hand because they just swung their axe in their own cooldown. You can take advantage of this and get a free hit or knock down their shield while they're still panicking. Auto-hitting is a strategy used to get a free hit after your opponent has broken down your shield. Auto-hitting is accomplished by spamming your attack button while holding your shield up. Then, when your enemy breaks your shield, your axe should instantly swing, hitting your enemy with a fully charged attack. It's never a bad idea to auto-hit, so try and use it every time you have your shield up. It lets you get a free hit back, so there's literally no reason not to. Kane plays without auto-hitting for some reason. Hey. Because of that, I'm able to hit his shield without consequences a lot more than I should be able to. Aww. Next up is crossbow timing. Now, crossbows are a little bit more important than bows when it comes to axe PvP, but bows do have a time and place, and we'll get to that later. As for crossbows, you want to shoot it at the correct time. Timing matters because if you shoot a crossbow at the wrong time, you could get caught off guard and hit by the opponent with an axe at a really bad time, and that can damage you quite a lot. You usually want to shoot your crossbow after an interaction after you do a shield dance and a trade or something along those lines. However, you really can shoot a crossbow whenever you want as long as you are out of the range of the opponent. But keep in mind when you want to reload. Now, the reason I'm telling you you usually want to do it after an interaction is that you'll have time to reload. You can reload the crossbow and then go back in for another shield dance. You might also want to reload a crossbow in between bowing battles. When you and your opponent are far and spread apart and you're shooting bows at each other, you might want to take a quick break and get that crossbow reload in before you go back in it. Now it's time for bows. As for bows, generally they're sort of a lesser type of crossbow. You want to use a bow when you would have otherwise used a crossbow but your crossbow isn't loaded. However, there are also specific times and places for bows. It might take longer to charge, but you get to decide how long you want to charge it for. If your enemy is kind of close, you can charge it for a little bit and shoot it at them to get some knockback. 
or if you're further away, you can fully charge it and have a little bit of a bow battle, easier for strafes and whatnot. When to shoot bows is pretty similar to when you want to shoot crossbows. Make sure it's after an altercation and we're far enough away from the opponent that you can safely shoot. Also, if they're getting close, again, you can use that little knockback trick, shoot them with an arrow, hit them back a bit. Although bows overall aren't the most useful of weapons, do not count them out. They will definitely help you in times of need and you can get into some pretty serious bow battles. So know how to use it, be prepared. Punish critting or P critting is when you use the knockback for an opponent's hit to get a free crit. A well placed punish crit can be the difference between a great win and a terrible loss. Punish critting is really useful, as it allows you to get a free crit pretty much any time that you take a hit, as long as you're still in range of the enemy. You can use punish crits to prevent things like getting comboed after your opponent lands a backstab on you, or any time where jumping would be a disadvantage, and you have the health to sacrifice a hit. Punish critting can turn what would otherwise be a bad situation into something a lot more manageable, or even favorable. It can flip battles on a dime. So make sure to keep punish critting in mind, since it's really easy to forget, and if used right, can be one of the most useful tricks to instantly improve your play. Now that we got all the main tips out of the way, it's time for some quick fire tips. Ready, set, go! As much as these tips might help improve your game, adaptability is key in axe duels. People play different ways, passive aggressive, and you have to be able to see that and change your own playstyle accordingly. If they are more passive, you have to find holes in their defense which you can exploit. And the other way for more aggressive players, you can back off and play a more patient game trying to find a weakness in their shield. Break the shield, get some good crits in, and that's another easy way you can win. As for other tidbits, if you start charging your crossbow at what would be a bad time, your opponent might start charging at you because it seems like you're vulnerable. But you can switch to your weapon last second and sneak in a free hit while they have their guard down instead. Also, if you shoot an arrow at your opponent while they have their shield up, they will most likely put it down immediately because they won't expect you to shoot again. If you shoot a second, fast, low power shot in this moment, you can get a free bow hit on them. And after the free bow hit, you can do many other things. You can switch into an axe hit, you can switch back your shield, and you, can, you have a lot of options going from there. Try and get used to hitting from as far back as you can. If you use all three blocks of your reach, it'll always be harder for your enemy to fight you. If you sprint jump right before you hit someone, it's a lot easier to start a combo. It's also useful on axe just to get a free hit while your enemy can't hit you back. When you think your opponent is on low health, preferably anywhere under 2 hearts, you can put your crossbow in your offhand, run up to them, hit their shield down, and instantly shoot them to kill them. Try and keep patterns out of your playstyle. The less your opponent can predict you, the better. It goes the other way around too, so try and look out for patterns in your opponent's playstyle, then counter them whichever way you can. Thank you guys so much for watching the whole video. Make sure to like and subscribe and check out my guy Swayji. He helped so much with this. His YouTube and Twitch is in the description. As this video was being made, we hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so, so much. Click that red subscribe button if you want to make that number go even higher. Can't wait to make more content for you guys. Hope to see y'all later. Bye.